गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वी वर डिस्कसिंग द चैप्टर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इंडस्ट्रीज एंड टिल नाउ वी हैव कवर्ड द एग्रो बेस्ड इंडस्ट्रीज दैट इज योर कॉटन टेक्सटाइल जू टेक्सटाइल एंड शुगर एंड नाउ टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद आयरन एंड स्टील इंडस्ट्रीज द फर्स्ट मिनरल बेस्ड इंडस्ट्री इज योर आयरन एंड स्टील इंडस्ट्री नाउ स्टूडेंट्स दिस इंडस्ट्री इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी द बेसिक इंडस्ट्री एंड हैवी इंडस्ट्री बिकॉज it lays the foundation for the development of other industries and the other industries are dependent on this industries for their development for raw material and this industry provides its raw material to many other industries products to many other industries for its further development so that's why it is the basic and key industry which uh, play a very important role in the uh, economic development of any country it is a backbone of any economy of any country uh, this iron and steel industry is the backbone and heavy industry uh, both the raw material as well as the finished products of this industry is very heavy and bulky so that's why it is considered as heavy industry if you see raw material also iron ore and all this is very uh, bulky and the finished products are also very uh, bulky and see the uh, steel it is required Uh, for manufacturing in so many other things in uh, construction activities in medical equipment scientific equip- equipments defense related equipments and this industry provides employment also this industry helps in modernizing agriculture by providing them equipment and then uh, this is a uh, heavy industry and basic industry so that is why it is called by iron and steel industry is regarded as basic and heavy industry so uh, now heavy industry as we have talked that raw material is also very bulky and the goods uh, produced the finished products are also very heavy and bulky so what will be the impact of this so heavy transportation cost will be there in this industry so everything has to be transported through uh, transportation only so the heavy cost will be there now uh, let's see the manufacturing of steel if we see uh, the approximation in the form of ratio it is uh, iron ore 4 and then coking coal 2 and limestone 1 so in this proportion 4 is to 2 is to 1 in this proportion we require the raw material that is iron ore is required then coking coal is required and then limestone is also added so this is the proportion 4 is to 2 is to 1 Four ratio of iron ore, two ratio of coking coal, and one ratio of limestone is added, and some quantities of manganese is also added to harden the steel. So, iron ore as a raw material is transported; it is shipped or rail or uh, or through railways. It reaches to the iron and steel plant, where in the blast furnaces, uh, the it is heated and then the impurities also removed there by introducing limestone and then coking coal is also ha- uh, added to provide the heat and then uh, in the uh, in the next step this uh, molten iron ore is poured into the uh, molds which are called pig and after this we will obtain the pig iron and now uh, further the pig iron is converted into the steel by removing further impurities by adding chromium nickel manganese is added to harden the steel and then the last stage is shaping the metal their pressing rolling forging uh, is done in order to give shape to the metal so that is the process of manufacturing of steel now uh, students the chota nagpur plateau that has a maximum concentration of iron and steel plants and industry it is also called as rur of india so this is a region rur of india the chota nagpur plateau the industrial region rur is a industrial region of a germany the leading industrial region and we have seen that in uh, 1923 uh, this industrial region was occupied by uh france in germany we have seen due to the treaty of versailles when germany got defeated so this region was occupied by the allies that is the uh, france so the leading industrial region we have seen it was occupied then uh, germany retaliated by uh, printing the paper currency recklessly and this led to hyper inflation in their uh, economy the worst economic blunder which the germany did 
So similarly here the Chota Nagpur Plateau is there, the rule of India. So many iron and steel plants are there. Why? Because of the proximity of the raw material. Low cost of iron ore. So obviously if proximity, the coal mines are there. So the cost of transportation and everything. So low cost will be there of the iron ore. Now high grade raw material is also available. Coking coal is there. Uh, magnetite iron ore hematite iron ore so these are available there in proximity only so cheap labor so this chota nagpur region it covers the area of your jharkhand chhattisgarh uh, west bengal uh, urissa also so these areas are there in this uh, so cheap labor abundant of cheap labor is there in these uh, regions and the home market also a lot of market to capture in these states so if one industry is producing anything the other industry can utilize so there is a potential to increase the market and to capture the home market and Kolkata port is also there which is providing the facilities for import and export and power facility that is provided by the Modar Valley Corporation uh, so West Bengal and Jharkhand area is being covered so these are uh, some of the factors why the concentration of this iron and steel industry is there in the Chota Nagpur plateau. Now uh, let's see what are the challenges of this industry. Now uh, challenges are the limited coking coal and expensive it is. This is the major challenge. It is expensive and it is limited. So this is the first uh, challenge for this industry and the productivity of labor <clears throat> it is not good you can say lower productivity is there and there is always a need to improve the efficiency by providing them training programs and irregular supply of energy is there so energy is being catered by this <coughs> corporation and if regular power supply is not available the labor will be sitting idle so uh, this is again a challenge. Uh, so if labor is sitting idle, no energy supply is there, so no production will be there. And poor infrastructure, so most of these uh, states, if you see uh, where most of the iron and steel plants are there, so they are facing the infrastructure problems. And more, you know, most of the plants, especially in the public sector, uh, so many uh, old machinery is being utilized, obsolute machinery is there. And it is very difficult for the government to go for upgradation of the machinery because the lack of investment again is the issue. And uh, the lot of capital investment is required in this uh, when we uh, set up this integrated uh, iron and steel plant. So a lot of capital is required. This is a large scale industry. Gestation period is there. Uh, three three four four year gestation period is there in which uh, when the we are setting the plant and then when actually the production starts after two three years so a lot of investment uh, this industry requires and long gestation periods are there so these are the uh, challenges the problems this industry is facing then uh, the liberalization and FDI, the foreign direct investment has given the boost to this industry. Private entrepreneurs are entering into this industry because of the relaxation in the policy norms. But more and more research and development should be there in order to boost this industry. Then after that, uh, we, we have to distinguish between integrated steel plants and mini steel plants. Integrated steel plants are those plants where all the processes is carried out under one roof uh, from uh, processing of the iron ore till the uh, shaping of the metal so all the process is being done in the uh, one plant only that is integrated big integrated uh, iron and steel plants and the mini steel plants where only one and two processes are carried out and in the electric furnaces the scraps uh, the scrap steel is being processed, recycled to manufacture the steel and then shaping of the metal is done. So this is the work of a mini steel plant. In integrated steel plant, obviously the investment required is high and in mini steel plant it is not uh, that much investment. And the integrated steel plant will cater to the international demand and local needs. It will fulfill both the sites domestic as aspects also and the international aspects also but the mini steel plants it will cater to the local needs only and there are 10 integrated steel plants in india but if we see like the largest one uh, in bhillai chhattisgarh and then 
we have more than 600 mini steel plants uh, which are spread throughout the country like Hazira is there in Gujarat. So uh, this was the distinguish or uh, purification between integrated steel plants and mini steel plants. Then uh, we uh, we have to talk about Kalinganagar controversy in, uh, which happened in uh, January 2006 uh, where the 12 tribal peoples they were killed by the police firing because they were protesting against uh, the Tata steel. Outside the Tata steel, they were protesting that they were not being paid the due compensation for their land. So this was the controversy. And so much uh, criticism was there due to this controversy uh, because this Kalinganagar, which is in Odisha, industrial hub it is. And it uh, affected the industrialization also after this incident because of the police firing was there on this innocent tribal people who were just protesting that the due compensation is not being given to them by the uh, Tata Steel. So this controversy happened in January 2006. The next industry is now the aluminium smelting. Now this is the second uh, most important metallurgical uh, industry after uh, iron and steel. <coughs> now here uh, the bauxite is the raw material again which is a very uh, bulky in itself. So again a lot of transportation cost is required, bulky raw material it is. Now uh, let's see some of the qualities of the aluminium. It is light in weight, resistance to corrosion is there. Uh, Rust will not come on this good conductor of heat. It is malleable, can be pressed into any shape like aluminium foils and all this. And becomes it, it becomes very strong when it is mixed with other metals like uh, magnesium if we will add. So it will give more strength to the aluminium. And it has been utilized in manufacturing aircrafts, in aviation industry, in, in making utensils and making uh, wires and it has gained the popularity as a substitute of steel, copper, zinc, lead in a number of industries. So now uh, here the raw material I have told you is bauxite. So aluminium is extracted from the bauxite. So the first the bauxite uh, is being pr uh, processed in the aluminium refinery where we obtain the Almina and then from Almina which is sent to the aluminium smelter after the, that the electricity is passed and we obtain the aluminium. So from bauxite we are obtaining alumina and from Almina we are obtaining the aluminium and in your book uh, one uh, ratio is given which is very important that is four to six tons of bauxite is required and from that the two tons of almina is extracted and from that two tons of almina one ton of aluminium is uh, extracted so this is the uh, process of manufacturing of aluminium from bauxite first from the bauxite we are extracting almina and from almina we are extracting aluminium and if we see the locational factors where this industry need to be uh, located is uh, where uh, the insured power supply is there and the availability of raw material at the low cost.